What is up YouTube? This is Johnny here again today and I'm going to be bringing you episode 2 of the IS300 build. That's right, we're going to continue taking it apart because I didn't get to finish last time. As you guys saw in the video, it got a little late, dark, and it was just time to go home. So now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the fenders and remove all the little bent areas. If you guys look down here with me, we're going to remove this little part, which is basically like a little L that they actually sell at the dealerships. So it's something easily removable. We can just cut it off or, or like get spot welded on. So we can drill it off the spot weld. That way we can take it off. But let's go ahead and continue with that now. All right, let's go ahead and start off by taking off this left fender. So all you really need for most Japanese cars is actually a 10 millimeter socket, which is basically to take apart the whole car because there's not that many different sockets for it. Fenders most of the time have bolts here through the top, right here underneath the bumper where it usually grabs it, sometimes in this little light area. And then underneath, all you really have is the inner fender liner, which is a little plastic cover that you just need to go ahead and unclip. So with a flathead screwdriver, you can remove those. And towards the back, they usually have like a little Phillips screw head that you can also remove. But one more thing is they also bolt it back here in between the door. So all you have to do is open the door a little bit and just kind of get, get to the bolts that are behind there. Looks like that was the only one back there. And then one more set of bolts go right directly underneath the bender, so right behind the wheel. In this case, they're directly underneath, going this way, so I need to change my tool. Sometimes you can't really get to the ones underneath the bender right here to take off the inner bender liner. What you just do is move the wheel a little bit or you can even take the wheel off if it works for you. So just a flathead screwdriver you should be able to take it off. Make sure you put all the bolts in a safe place where you can remember for when we're putting it back together. Okay, now that you got all the bolts removed and you figured out where they're all at, because in different vehicles obviously they're going to be in different places, but most of the time that's the general area. Now that we got them all off, and there goes the fender. Not much damage, has a little bit of damage up here. Looks like a little bit of the paint faded off, but. It's in pretty good conditions. We could save it, or I could just buy a new one, just depending on if I can find one. So we're gonna just put it to the side for now, just in case. Okay, so now that we have the fender removed, what we wanna do is go ahead and remove this part right here, which is part of the core support, that the center is bolted most of the time, and these outer edges right here are actually spot welded. So what, we, what I do to remove that, so I just drill where the spot welds are at. So let's go ahead and do that. Now after they've been drilled, what I do is I take a hammer with either a special flathead screwdriver or something that you can actually smack it and it'll, it'll cut the weld and just take that piece off. Or another thing you could do is also just grind down the spot welds and that should come off but I find that this method is a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. Looks like we have one more that I missed. Okay. 
sometimes the pieces don't want to come off, what you can do is cut it. So I have this special tool here to cut off any sort of metal. There it is, now this piece is off. The only thing I have to go ahead and take out is the wire for the hood latch. Make sure that when you're cutting stuff like this to be very careful because this, this piece of metal is actually really thin. So when it's cut, it's actually extremely sharp and you can actually cut yourself. So either be careful or just wear some leather gloves to protect you. All right, now that we finished up with the other side, let's go ahead and take care of the right side. Basically make it look exactly the same. Remove it and basically no, strip it down. That's what we want to do, strip it down, get all the bad pieces off. That way we can see that there's nothing more bent when we, when we put it together. You know, with the core support, the fenders and everything, everything's just gonna line up perfectly because nothing is actually bent anymore. There was no bondo used in the process. So it's just gonna be a nice, clean fix. Let's go ahead and remove this fender also. All right guys, looks like we're done with the episode for today. As you guys can see, it is now a faceless IS-300. Everything has been removed that was damaged, except for the hood. I'm gonna leave the hood on there for now, just so that way, if it rains, or I don't want the sun hitting directly on the engine, just so it protects it for now, it's easily removable. It's just four bolts and it comes right off. So I'm just gonna leave that on there for now. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start sourcing out parts, you know, getting everything together. I actually have the headlights already. Um, so I just got to get the rest of it, that way I can start putting it all together, but before that I'll probably paint it and then put it together. So that is it, thank you guys for watching, you guys have a great day, and don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new, and please go ahead and look back at the beginning of the IS300 build, this is the third one that I came out, but it's the second episode, so yeah. You guys want a little sneak peek? I also have a faceless BRZ at the moment. So that one will be coming up in a series in the future. So it's coming soon.